Miami Hurricanes held a closed practice over the weekend. No media allowed. But here's what we know. You are Locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricanes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Easter. I'm Alex Dono, University of Miami alumnus, longtime South Florida sports radio vet and writer for allhurricanes.com. And thank you so much to the everydayers for making Locked On Canes your first listen and your first watch today. We are free wherever you get your podcasts. We're free on YouTube. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Create an account and use code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. So I do want to talk about a couple of the most important recruits who were visiting and watching that super secret practice on Friday. But let's talk about the reported standouts first. So as far as where the intel comes from, not bird's eye view from me. Uh, this was a closed off practice with scrimmage situations. There was a lot of scrimmaging, you know, two minute drill, red zone, regular game situation, stuff like that. So we rely on uh, people who were there, who did share some information. I am also relying on some reports from websites like canesinsight.com and 24-7 Sports, who do an awesome job, as we try to do, covering the Miami Hurricanes. So first thing, talk about the starting quarterback. Observers, and I've heard this from multiple observers, pluralized, have said that Cam Ward looked fantastic on Saturday uh, as Miami's starting quarterback. In fact, according to a report from Kane's Insight, this is apparently the best that Ward has looked this spring in a Hurricanes uniform. And, you know, we talk about the practices where they are open to the media and Ward has been consistently the best guy in the room. You can see the leadership. You can see the experience. There's not a throw he can't make. And, you know, furthermore, and we were talking about this last week with Marcus Benjamin when he joined us on Friday, uh, you can see, uh, and again, these are practice drills is primarily what I'm able to watch. So it's nice to see that this is translating to scrimmage situations. You can see the sort of chemistry that Ward has been building with guys like Xavier Restrepo. Uh, and what we really apparently what was seen in that scrimmage on Saturday was chemistry between Cam Ward and Isaiah Horton. I've been told Isaiah had a really strong day at the scrimmage and in other practice situations on Saturday and that he was open a lot. And hopefully that's just good for him and not an indictment on the defensive backs. But uh, apparently one of the best plays in practice was at the very end of practice. Ward hits Isaiah Horton for a deep ball. Uh, folks said that it reminded them of the one that Tyler Van Dyke hit Horton in in the Texas A&M game when he scored that long touchdown. So this is encouraging, of course, for Isaiah Horton because he looks to be the guy who's the front runner for now, and probably will be the front runner to fill Colby Young's role next season. He's got that similar body type, and I think he's probably got a higher ceiling than Colby Young. It's just about hitting that. Uh, according to 24-7 Sports, and here's a guy we continue to talk about. He's become a Locked on Kane show favorite. Uh, early enrollee freshman tight end, Elijah Lofton, who's not only been stepping up and making plays at tight end, but he might even be, according to Gabby Yerudia, Right now, the best healthy tailback on the roster. Huh? You heard me right. Tailback. Elijah Lofton has been getting reps in the backfield as well. I did see some of that uh, in a recent practice, and apparently he got some reps in the scrimmage as well. So Lofton, of course, one of the things that we praised him for, the true freshman early enroll uh, enrollee tight end out of Bishop Gorman, his versatility and the fact that the guy is, he's a human Swiss Army knife, but you can't really say jack of all trades, master of none, because he seems to be a master in multiple different disciplines because he continues to make really good plays, catching balls, blocking, and apparently running out of the backfield as well. And it wasn't only the work that he did at tailback, where in the reps I've seen him get, he looks very natural in that sort of role. Like you would never think, oh, this is a tight end that's cross training. Like, oh, you think, oh, he looks the part of, of being a, a running back, but he also looks the part at tight end as well. So Lofton playing tight end had another just ridiculous touchdown grab in practice. He produces big plays routinely in practice. This was from an Emory Williams throw, and it was described to me as a 50-plus yard 
touchdown. Now, you guys all remember uh, the video clip that was going around, uh, which I, I was there in person for this in a practice a couple of weeks ago, that crazy one-handed grab that Elijah Lofton made, another throw from Emory Williams. Now, the grab that was on that original video was actually thrown well behind him, and he just made an incredible play. This one, I'm told, was an awesome throw and an awesome catch as well. And speaking of Emory Williams, I don't know if I'm sleeping on him on him a little bit too much. Like, do you, do you guys think that Emory might emerge as the quarterback too? Because, yeah, we talk a lot about the battle between Reese Poffenbarger and Jakari Brown, who are both also doing really well. But it sounds to me like, and it's looked to me like, Emery is getting a little bit better with each practice. And, you know, part of that is being he's a younger guy who's still developing. But let's not forget, he's also coming off that fractured non-throwing arm. So he's able to get more comfortable, I think, continuing to step up as that, you know, that fracture, which wasn't too long. Just a few weeks ago, he was still wearing a sling. He's no longer wearing that. So it sounds like he's doing really well. But back to Elijah Lofton for a moment. I'm going to start to make some bold proclamations on number nine. Because I think he is emerging to me as the top candidate to be this year's Reuben Bain. Not a direct comparison. Obviously, they play on different sides of the football. But if I think about Reuben Bain last year being a guy who I believe was, you know, an underrated four-star recruit coming out of high school. And maybe he was underrated because he was a little bit undersized if you go by the prototypical size. Same thing with Elijah Lofton. This is a four-star tight end coming out of high school, seen as being a little bit undersized, not prototypical size for his position, but he's been out there in practice making five-star type of plays. Now, Bain last year and again this year was doing that in practice, then he did it consistently in games, was one of the best, most outstanding freshmen in the country, top freshman defensive lineman in the country. I wonder if Elijah Alston or Elijah Lofton, sorry, there's too many Elijahs on the team. It starts to just scramble in my brain. But I wonder if Elijah Lofton could end up being this year's Reuben Bain. And while I mentioned the name Elijah Alston, the transfer defensive end out of Marshall, uh, I hear he performed well in the scrimmage. We have more standouts to talk about on this episode. And it, it's nice that Miami raises the overall competition level out there. Again, this you know doesn't guarantee 11, 12, 16 wins, anything like that, step-by-step, step, brick by brick. But we're seeing the competition levels go up in practice. That's a good thing. And that also looks great when you've got four- and five-star recruiting visitors out there watch you perform because there were a lot of recruiting visitors, including my favorite player in the entire class. I will also tell you when we come back, the single best piece of news that's being reported coming out of that Miami Hurricane scrimmage. We'll explain next. You want to keep it locked right here. Brand new episode of Locked on Canes. And I know you're keeping it locked to Amazon Fire TV. You're like me. you got to get your sports. You've got to get them now. You've got to get them live on demand. Fire TV is your destination for sports. From live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. And that includes all of us here at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels lets you dive into all of the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep you up to date on all the latest in the world of sports, March Madness, NBA, MLB, lots more, not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit Amazon.com slash locked on fire TV. <clears throat> Thank you so much for making this Easter episode of Locked on Canes your first listen and your first watch today. We're free wherever you get your podcast. We're free on YouTube. We're part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. And if you want to take your everyday -er experience to the next level, Sign up to become a Locked on Canes Insider. I include a link in the show description below. When you're a Locked on Canes Insider, you get text messages directly from my phone to yours and vice versa with practice updates, breaking news, recruiting scoops, 
question and, and answers with me. A lot of times we answer the insider questions on the show. So click the link in the show description below. Become a Locked on Canes insider. Try it free for 14 days. And then if you like it, you can opt in for $4.99 a month. We had a, a lot of added value there at Locked on Canes insiders. So the, the single best piece of news coming out of Miami's practice and scrimmage on Saturday is, by all accounts, no injuries, <laughs> which I mean, uh, and, you know, knock on wood, because obviously Miami has, uh, I, I think, uh, another scrimmage coming up this weekend, and then the spring game is going to be the following weekend. So those are scrimmage situations with a certain amount of contact allowed. They're not going too crazy killing each other out there. That's going to be the case in the spring game as well. But for most of the spring game, they're going to be able to tackle to the ground. And, and that, by the way, that, that's one of those things. Because you guys remember there was this awesome clip from last week in practice. It was before Saturday of Zaquan Patterson, like lowering a shoulder and, and really colliding hard with Trevante Citizen. Trevante Citizen, another one, by the way, a side note on him. Uh, apparently he looked pretty good on Saturday. He's getting in some work with Duke Johnson, who's on the staff now as a student assistant. So I think Trevante Citizen is continuing to, you know, be on the up and up. And Mario Cristobal said this past Thursday that in Thursday's practice, something clicked for him, right? Because he's trying to get his mojo back and his confidence back. I think that's the biggest thing. Like, you know, physically, he's still, you know, I guess somewhat the same guy that he was before the injury. He's up to about 230 pounds. He's very fast, but mentally he's got to be able to get that confidence back after losing two years due to injury. But uh, anyways, before we got sidetracked, it's great to know that no injuries came out of this scrimmage because obviously we've, we've had it happen in spring practices, fall camp in recent years where Miami's had some, some bad luck in some of these situations. So that was, I thought the best piece of news was everybody came out of this past Saturday healthy from what we understand. Um, you know, we talk about offensive players doing well. I don't know if anyone in terms of early enrollees is doing better right now than Elijah Lofton, but Jojo Trader and Nye Carr are also players who have been standing out throughout spring football so far. We've talked about Trader specifically a lot on this show. Nye Carr is also trending upward. In fact, Carr had what was described, I, I think, in a, a Canes Insight post as the best catch in the practice this past Saturday. Had a big catch in the end zone, grabbing it over Robert Stafford, who's a guy that we have high hopes for at corner. Uh, I was told that Chris Johnson, the uh, second year running back also looked very good at tailback. He had a 60 plus yard reception for a touchdown from Cam Ward, had an explosive run as well. Uh, and again, Johnson has a great opportunity. The same thing with Elijah Lofton, who's getting reps at, at full at uh, running back and fullback as well. But Chris Johnson has a great opportunity with, with Mark Fletcher being out for spring. Um, Fletcher reportedly is going to be back in time for summer and fall camp, which is fantastic because Mark Fletcher is the best running back on this football team. AJ Allen, who's nursing a minor deal is also out for spring. He should be back in time for fall camp. Um, Henry Parrish, of course, has transferred away from the program. So Chris Johnson is getting so many prominent reps at running back, uh, based on the guys who aren't available and aren't practicing. It's nice to hear that he's making the most of that and that he made some plays in the practice as well, because I think this can be this can be potentially a breakout year for Chris Johnson. Now, here's a piece of news I think most of you guys are going to love to hear, because one of the big position battles that we've talked about on this show repeatedly is who's going to be the starting left guard or who's going to be your starting five on the offensive line? Because there is a chance they could move guys around if need be. Like we know uh, Jalen Rivers, I like him just fine at left tackle. But if, you know, if you really needed to get your best five out there, Rivers is capable of playing guard and playing either side of the field if necessary. But I like him just where he is at left tackle. So if he's your presumed left tackle starter, Zach Carpenter is your presumed starting center. Inez Cooper, by the way, big coop is having a really great spring. We don't talk about him enough just because I don't get to see the line of scrimmage guys enough with my own eyes because they're usually practicing on, on the far side of the field. But that was one of those that's getting, been getting great reviews from coaches. And when we did have on Don Bailey Jr. Uh, yesterday, who does get to watch the offensive linemen right up close in practice, he can echo the praises of Big Coop as your presumed starter at right guard and then your presumed starter at right tackle, who is not practicing in the spring. 
is CC Maui Noah. That's, you know, uh, allowed guys like Matthew McCoy to get a lot of reps at that position. I think he's going to be an important uh, right tackle. But something on the offensive line you guys will like to hear. It is my understanding that most of the prominent left guard reps on Saturday were going to Samson Okunlola, the pancake honcho, who, you know, for my money is the guy with the highest upside outside of Maui Noah, who's already been a starter this past year. I think Samson Okunlola, former five-star recruit, was just an absolute monster coming out of Thayer Academy in Massachusetts in his high school days. Uh, you know, I, this is the guy that I project to end up being Miami's opening day starting left guard. And I think a year or two down the road, he'll be Miami's starting left tackle. But first things first, I think he can potentially lock down that guard spot. Uh, he's coming on a, uh, off an injury from last year, but he's been totally healthy since the start of spring. And it sounds like he keeps working his way upwards towards potentially being a starter there. So I would love to have a starting offensive line with Rivers. Pancake Honcho, Carpenter, who transferred in from Indiana with all the experience in the world, Big Coop and Big CC. I think that would be a tremendous group. And then you've got, you know, really important players like McCoy and, and Tommy Kinsler and some others who can rotate in. So you're going to have uh, potentially a really good offensive line next year. And I thought you guys would like to know that I'm, I'm hearing positive things about the Honcho. Um, I also heard good things from the defense uh, coming out of Damari Brown, that he had a good day on Saturday, and Mish Powell, the transfer defensive back, gets a lot of work at nickel, but can also start at safety if need be, that he continues to shine. Remember, Don Bailey was singing the praises of Mish Powell in our last episode. I heard it was a good day for Wesley Besaint, and I also heard it was a good practice for Marcellus Pulliam, who's one of those younger linebackers. You know, Popo Aguirre has been the guy grabbing a lot of the headlines on this show, came in in the same class as Pulliam. Pulliam, remember, had a, had an interception last season. Uh, apparently, he's coming along and had a good scrimmage as well. So uh, I think that's most uh, of the intel that I've been able to gather, some of it from secondhand information told directly to me, uh, others of it gathered from reading posts on uh, on 24-7 Sports and Kane's Insight. And shout out to them because it's a lot of great people producing content and producing reports in the Miami Hurricanes space. But bottom line, uh, no reported injuries, which is great. And Cam Ward continues to look like that dude, right? I mean, we all know if Ward, if he keeps the fumbling down, that's kind of been his biggest issue the last couple of years is maybe not trying to do too much and not getting careless with the football. Interceptions has not been a big problem for him. So let's keep that down. Let's don't have a, a repeat of uh, Tyler Van Dyke from last season. Keep the interceptions down, get the fumbles down. Uh, this guy can make every throw, can improvise, can make plays. So I like what I'm hearing coming out of this Saturday. Uh, the next practice that I will be able to attend should be Tuesday, Tuesday, and Thursday this week. They're going to be practicing at Green Tree and in the indoor facility, so I'm looking forward to that. When we come back, really important announcement about uh, about my shows here on Locked On. Nothing bad, don't worry. Uh, an important announcement coming up, plus some feedback from DJ Pickett and from another one of the top players from Chicago. Miami continues to recruit and land some great players from the Chicago area. Hopefully they can keep that trend going. If you want to keep a trend going, keep it locked right here on this brand new episode of Locked on Canes. And I already know you're keeping it locked. It's game time. Folks, buying tickets last minute to sporting events, if you're not using game time, it can be a stressful experience. But when you have the game time app, oftentimes this is when you're getting the best deals, especially during baseball season, because you know, when the Marlins are home, you know, they play 81 home games. Sometimes you might wake up on a Wednesday morning or a Monday morning. Oh, they're playing a matinee game today or they're playing at 640 tonight. I want to get out there. What am I looking at for tickets? You're going to find some incredible deals, guys, whether you're looking for MLS, NFL, NHL, NBA. Uh, you're going to get the best deals at game time. Game time is now an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the game time app actually go down as it gets closer to the first pitch, which is awesome. Folks, I love the zone deals at game time. I love that you can see the view directly from your seat. So you're not going to have any buyer's remorse after you buy that ticket. And you're also, you're not going to have any buyer's remorse because they give you all in pricing. Like they tell you exactly what fees you're going to have to pay up front. They don't try to tack it on at the end like some of the other 
ticket sites do, where it really kind of throws you off and, and ruins the experience. And the game time guarantee means you're always getting the best deal. If you find tickets in the same section or row for less, game time is going to credit you 110% of the difference. So, folks, here's what you want to do. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On College for twenty dollars off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Thank you so much for making this episode of Locked on Canes your first listen and your first watch today. We're free wherever you get your podcasts. We're free on YouTube. And folks, are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Do you have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked on Sports today. A free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked on Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news. Streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So uh, one of uh, the most important players Miami is recruiting in this cycle is DJ Pickett, five-star defensive back. Miami likes him as a 6'4 cornerback. He's also very capable of playing safety. Uh, he's one of the top players in the state of Florida and the eighth ranked player in the entire country. DJ Pickett not only took in practice on Saturday, came down from Zephyr Hills in the Tampa area. Uh, he actually made it a three day unofficial visit. He was there Thursday, Friday and Saturday, Thursday and Friday for Pickett was more about seeing the campus, talking with coaches, kind of getting that unofficial visit experience. And then Saturday, kick your feet up, watch the practice, see the competition levels out there. Um, you know, one thing that stood out to me from the feedback on Pickett is, thank goodness, uh, the transition from cornerbacks coaches doesn't seem to be something that has been a negative for him. Like he, he doesn't really feel like anything's changed in his recruitment because it was initially Jamila Dye who was recruiting him, who left for a job in the NFL in Buffalo. And then for the past uh, month or so, it's been Chevis Jackson recruiting him for Miami. Uh, you know, it's, it's, this is not seen as anything that's going to negatively affect his views on Miami. And it seems like coach Jackson has done a really good job kind of keeping up that contact and maybe even taking it to another level because I, based on the feedback that I've been hearing, it sounds like Coach Jackson is an excellent recruiter. Uh, and I know current players rave about him. Daryl Porter had a lot of nice things to say about Coach Jackson to me. So uh, thankfully, the change in cornerbacks coaches doesn't seem to be affecting uh, negatively, hopefully positively, but negatively, it's not affecting where Miami stands for Pickett. And, you know, something that Pickett, Obviously, as a Miami fan, you can say that is yeah, not not the best situation for him. It'd be a great situation. He sees a very quick path to playing time at Miami. Like Pickett feels like, you know, with how good he is, Miami hasn't uh, hasn't had a, a cornerback uh, at his level, at least coming out of high school in for, for a hot second here. You know, he feels like based on, you know, who's going to be around in the defensive back room next year, that he sees a pretty quick path to playing time at Miami and playing time is obviously uh, an important thing for him. So that was one of the things that he talked about. He said, first of all, it's an opportunity for me to get on the field early. And just the place like Miami, there's nowhere like Miami. Just the people around the building, good people, and I want to be around it, he said. Primary competition for Pickett. I believe the uh, the top two competitors here, I think Miami is, is in the top three, in my humble opinion, Oregon and LSU. Uh, LSU may be the slight trending favorite right now, although coming out of this good visit to Miami, Miami may be trending upwards, but, but LSU had been pretty hot lately. Georgia and Clemson are also in the mix for him. And Pickett, he does have an official visit set for June 14th at Miami, so he's going to be back for another multi-day visit uh, in uh, in a couple of months here. And um, he's not rushing a decision like we we've had some guys, you know, Miami just unfortunately missed out on a linebacker the other day with T.J. Alford choosing Ohio State over Miami. But in, in the case of Pickett, um, he's taken his time. I've heard he may announce a verbal commitment in October at the earliest. That may even drag out even farther. I, I'm, I'm just saying that as a hunch. I don't know anything there. But October is when I understand he may be, be, may be looking to announce a verbal commitment so you're going to have uh, for another six months at least 
battles raging in his recruitment. And even if he does make a verbal commitment in October, obviously that's going to continue on until National Signing Day in December. But uh, Miami is trending nicely with DJ Pickett. And of course, he's got the family ties. He was watching practice on Saturday with his cousin Booker, who hasn't enrolled yet at Miami. So Booker also came down. He signed with Miami. He's going to be enrolling this summer. Uh, I think he's going to be hopefully uh, a standout uh, edge rusher at the University of Miami. And his cousin DJ is one of the top players in the country in the 2025 recruiting class. Another player it was nice to hear had a good visit is Miami continues to get guys uh, or try to get guys from the Chicago area. Edwardsville, Illinois, top 24-7 defensive lineman, Jose Epinesa made it down to Miami again. This is at least his third visit. He's the younger brother of Bill's defensive lineman, A.J. Epinesa, and apparently they both came down together to watch practice. And so he had A.J. there kind of helping him, you know, with his NFL experience, kind of helping him understand the way practice was run and what was going on out there. So, you know, Miami sounds like they're making some inroads with Epinesa uh, as well. So that would be nice to get another top defensive lineman out of Chicago. Uh, and all right, so guys, before we run here, want to let you know you're going to be starting to get double doses of me every day on this network. If anybody wanted that, I'm sorry if you didn't want it, but uh, I'm going to become a regular starting this week on Locked on ACC. So I'm I'm humbled by the opportunity. I'm thrilled with the opportunity, and I'm going to be joining Kenton Gibbs, who's been a staple on that show for a couple of years now. Uh, we're going to start doing Locked on ACC together. So uh, obviously there's going to be plenty of basketball talk uh, for hopefully for the next week or so. Maybe the ACC will produce an NCAA champion this year. Uh, we'll talk about spring practices for teams, including Miami and including NC State that Kenton also covers and teams around the Atlantic Coast Conference. And we're going to have a lot of fun with it. Locked on ACC, you can get it wherever you get your podcast. Just search Locked on ACC on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Search for it on YouTube. And of course, Locked On Canes will continue to run daily, if not twice daily sometimes, because we love the content covering the University of Miami. So that will not change. Locked On ACC will be an addition, not a substitution. So we will talk to you guys again next time. We'll talk to you tomorrow on another episode of Locked On Canes. We are part of the awesome Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.